changing now, just you and me. It's Sway in the Morning, broadcasting live from Minneapolis uh, on Shade 45. Yeah, 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 Minneapolis, we are here. Make some noise, Whoa! Minneapolis! This is nice here being at the Ice House. The kitchen is open. You waiting on them shrimp and grits, right? Oh. So, Yo, I've been waiting on shrimp and grits for about 90 minutes now. What are we doing? Oh, come on, Callaway. Yeah, Delayed gratification is I okay. I like that cornbread, though. Did the, is the cornbread here? We got, where Brian at? B, where Brian? Where, you got, where the cornbread at, bro? You, you it's the, you, are you the owner? You he bring, bring the owner so. up here, man. Like I brought, the owner came out. Give it up for yeah. Brian, man. Yeah, owner, yeah, hey, what's up, brother? This place is beautiful. Yeah, I come love here, it man. here. Step on stage, oh. man. Look at yes. this man bringing economy to the local system. And give him a round of applause. How are you? What's up? Hey, hey good to see you. Yo, I just want to partially thank you for always allowing us the opportunity to come to your venue and broadcast. Yes. Thank you for being here. It's an honor having you here. Yeah, man. You got the same chef as um, last year? Yeah, he's my business partner, Matt. It, where is he? Is Matt here? Matt! He's back making your shrimp and grits right now. Okay, okay, cool, man. You guys always show us love. Even after the broadcast, we usually hang out and chop it up, man. You yeah, got a lot of events happening this week um, in the South We do. Weekend? So uh, tomorrow night in particular, Spotify is doing uh, the uh, mic check podcast with okay. uh, Ali from A Tribe Called Quest, uh -huh. and they're interviewing Brother Ali and uh, Keith Ellison. And Keith Ellison. Okay, yeah. so Ali Shaheed Muhammad from Tribe Called Quest is here, man. man our so family. That's, That's our, our family. family. All right, Brother Ali, man. Brother, Brother Ali. Ali, one of the illest MCs and spitters ever and to do it. And a great finger. He did the Five Fingers of Death with us in, in New York, and he shredded it. It's, 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 it's iconic now. I appreciate you, though, man. Thank you. It's great to meet you, too, okay. as well as last few years. Thank you. You don't have the shrimp and grits ready, though, man. We got to talk <laughs> about that. Man. I'm going Thank right you. out for it. All right, good, man. Good. Um, I like putting the spotlight. I mean, obviously, we could, we got access to a lot of um, so-called A-list celebrities, but Heather B and I always say that people are people. It don't matter what you do, how, That's right. how famous you are, how popular you are, how much money you make. We all shit and bleed the same, you know, yeah. right, right, right? No. How many people used the bathroom this morning? Just so it makes some noise. Hey. Yes. No. So did I, yo. Yeah, shout out to toilet paper. I actually, uh, I used it here. It's a very nice bathroom here. Wow, wow, how about Wonder putting his ass on the toilet seats? Give it up for Wonder, he trusts yeah. the toilet seats Damn, here. Yeah, you be sitting Wonder. I don't do public, though. <laughs> you know what I mean, Cam? Yeah, yeah, Cam day, <laughs> right? Usually. Usually the public bathrooms are real dirty. Yeah, yeah, that's my man Cam, man. You know, <laughs> like, like, to, like for an example, the SA bathroom. Yes, 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 at your school, right? No, at my school? Well, yeah, they always got wet toilet paper on the ceiling. What is that oh. about, man? It's a certain, certain thing called butt etiquette, where you place your butt, right? Yeah. Oh, but <laughs> I, I always, I always got to get the toilet paper and just make a little yeah, seat out of it. Right there, make a seat out of it. Your parents taught you right. Yeah, man. Okay, it's a little Petri dish. You don't want to sit in it. Um, I don't even want to transition to our next guest. From <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, how do I transition to our next guest? Um, this man wants to make sure that of every public bathroom in St. Paul, you know what I mean, is clean yes. and humane. <laughs> and, and, yes. and he, 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 he was born and raised in the Rondo neighborhood of St. Paul, Minnesota. How many people know that neighborhood? Put your hand up, all right? <laughs> All right, um, his parents were Ramsey County Commissioner and um, a retired police officer, but oh, he's wow. been dedicated to this community. Just like Brandon, he's a mathematician. The man has a mathematical brain, uh, and he has accomplished something that's never been accomplished before. He's the first African-American mayor of St. Right. Paul. Give it up for Mayor oh. Melvin Carter, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. That's right. Young too. What's good? I love it. Such a pleasure meeting you. We got some mayor here, y'all. Make some noise. Right, right, right here with us, man. Yes, sir. I don't know. I'm seeing a little Chris Rock in here, man. What y'all think, man? <laughs> I can see a slight resemblance. Um, All right. You know, you, you went away to school, right? Where did you go get your BA degree? I went to Florida AM University. Okay, a lot Rattlers. of Rattlers. Okay. A lot Thank of, you. There you go, man. Give that man a throne. He's I the mayor. It. You don't have to stand up. That was weird. Because uh, <laughs> you wasn't standing. Well. Yeah, I know. I right. should have stood, man. Right. Right. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, um, 
Hey, I just appreciate y'all having me on here. Well, you don't have nothing else to do today, bro? Hey, I don't now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, how, how long have you been mayor now? Uh, just since January. We got elected uh, this past November, got, ele- got sworn in on January 2nd. Uh-huh. And, and what was your campaign about? What did you run on? You know, our campaign is about uh, building a city that works for everybody uh-huh. in St. Paul. And, and you've been giving love to Minneapolis, but yes. I want you to know Soundset's in St. Paul. So yes. I just want to make sure that we set that straight. I stand corrected, brother. <laughs> Twin City. We're uh-uh. in Minneapolis now, yeah. but Soundset's in St. Paul. I, so, was, I wasn't set tripping. I just thought right. I said Twin <laughs> Cities, man. You want to do that? Mayor's a marked part of the St. Paul right. gang. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You know, I got to represent my city. You know, in St. Paul, like too many other cities around the country, we can still predict a child's life, expected life outcomes based more on what she looks like, what uh-huh. her race is, and what neighborhood she's born into, uh-huh. than how hard she works. Okay. And so we're focused on building a city that works for everybody. Uh, we're talking about, we're going to be raising the minimum wage in St. Paul to $15 an hour before the end of this year. Uh-huh. We're working to put a uh, uh, $50 in the bank to start every child born in our city on the pathway to college. Uh, and actually in the first quarter of our election, we that's completely so revised and rewrote our police department's use of force policies. Wow, that's interesting, man. Um, Mayor Carter, what I, would, what I would like to talk with you about, and I'm wondering if it's important here as well, one of my ways of trying to give back without being preachy is talking to some of the young men in my neighborhood and that approach me about the importance of staying out of trouble because as Watana mentioned, when you do get a record and you do get locked up, your voting rights are right. removed from you. And I feel like that's just a system to try to stop us from voting. Um, on a local level, how important is it here in St. Paul and Minneapolis to vote? What is the turnout on a local level? Yeah, it's important on every level. And, you know, when you get to the lo- most local level, the turnout goes down a lot of times. But I share with people all the time who your city council member is, who your school board member, who your mayor is, uh, has a more direct impact on your Judge day-to-day jo- life. Jo- the judges, All yeah. of those things have a dire- more direct impact on your day-to-day life than who the president is and who your senators are. So we need to really kind of pay attention to the those things on the and, local level yeah and you're right we, we 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 definitely want people to stay out of trouble so they i mean for many reasons one so they can say to vote uh but we also have to change that so i'm a part of a group of folks in this state i know when is too yeah. we're saying we need to make sure that everybody in our community has the right to vote and having a felony conviction on your background is not a good reason to mm-hmm. exclude people from voting mm-hmm. Mayor Carter, you know, um, obviously a lot of people of color, we come from disenfranchised communities, and sometimes when you're so at the bottom, you tend to magnify material things, like that's what you want, and we get into a habit of um, ownership of just materials. So going into some type of political office doesn't really feel like a path you want to take. That's why we often go to entertainment. So can you speak about some of the feelings, um, positive feelings that you receive from your job, because a lot of times people often just glorify the feeling of flexing, you yeah. know, of obtaining. Yeah. That's the only thing that matters. But really, like, what are the amazing aspects of being mayor? It's amazing every single day. We have a great team, but the thing that's most amazing to me is the amount of energy that exists in our community. Mm-hmm. You know, after I, after I won, I was uh, walking my children to school one day. I was walking back across the bridge, and there's just a brother walking across the bridge with his headphones on. He looked at me, pulled his headphones on. He said, hey, you're the mayor, man. That's a big deal. And so just people kind of being excited about it, people being willing to help and wanting to pitch in, wanting to help us door knock when we were running, and now wanting to help us. We just had a big citywide summit last week, and people all just came out from every neighborhood. And just knowing people are chipping in and people want to help in that way means a lot. Yeah. Wow, man. Mayor Carter here is all right. Give him a big round of applause. Give it up. You, you talked about uh, how many kids you have. Uh, we, we got a blended family, so we have five between the five, two. Five kids. Okay, so I'm a wow. part of um, a three pro- at home. Three at home. Okay, so you need that mayor check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a part of a board uh, called The Last Mile, and what we do, we go into the prison system and, and talk to um, a lot of folks who are behind bars um, about rehabilitation through um, co- learning how to code, you know, and, and what you find is something called a school to prison link or schoolhouse to jailhouse pipeline That's right. um, that exists in this country where um, uh, that, 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 that system is um, pretty much um, predicting how many students uh, may end up in jail based on test scores, so on and so forth. Does that exist here? And then, uh, and just and overall, how can we eradicate that or get beyond that school to prison pipeline? That definitely exists here, okay. and that's an outgrowth 
of uh, you mentioned that my father's retired St. Paul police officer. Yeah. He started an organization called Save Our Sons yeah. because he would have mothers kind of come and talk to him and say, you know, you got to help me save my son. He's going down this wrong path. And as a police officer, he would say, well, the, the standard line is, well, if he does something wrong, call the police and we'll arrest him. And that's, of course, not what a mothers would be looking for. Yeah. And so I think it's an outgrowth of our logic that we've fallen for for the last generation that says if we want safer neighborhoods, all we need is more cops, tougher prosecutors, and bigger jails. That logic has failed us over and over again, and mm -hmm. we just keep doubling down on it. Mm -hmm. So we've built in our office what we call our community first public safety plan that says our, our, our public safety strategy is about connecting young people and their families to opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's about making sure that we're a safe and welcoming community uh, for people who reenter our community from incarceration. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about investing in the trust, not the us versus them thing, yeah. but the trust that exists between officers and our neighbors. That's why we started from day one revising our use of force policies, uh, and it's really about just creating safe environments where we're all safe and we're less likely to have to call the police in the first place. Yes. I like that. Mayor Melvin Carter, man. Look, I know it's a lot of people from St. Paul in Minneapolis. That's right. Uh, and, and I want to set, I want to get in between y'all. I'm here to bring you together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, show of hands, how many people would like to speak to the mayor and ask him a direct question while he's here? You know, That's just a show of hands, man. Don't be scared. Man. Don't be yeah. scared. Yes, yes. OQ, where you at? Let's start, man. Say your name and where you're from. That's dope. So wait, wait, hold up. You raised your hand and pointed to him? <laughs> so how was it just growing up in St. Paul, going to J.J. Hill, just really the whole growth and development from there to FAM and how, how's that been taking you to this incredible level? Oh, it's been amazing, man. It's good to see you. It's been amazing. Uh, you know, we grew up in the neighborhood and, you know, grew up here, uh, got a chance to interact with just FAMU alumni, Florida A&M University is my school I went to. People used to ask me, it's a black college, and people would always ask me, did it feel like a culture shock showing up at Florida A&M? I was there, man, it felt like home for the yeah. first time. Yeah. You know, being there around all these incredible people who are from all over the world, uh, who are doing incredible things right now, uh, it was amazing. And so getting an opportunity to just see beautiful black people who were both excelling in the classroom, who were going on and excelling in politics. Uh, my, my student government president back then, Andrew Gillum, is running for governor of Florida right now. Oh, as wow. a, Yeah, he's the mayor of Tallahassee, Florida right now. And wow. so, you know, big people doing big things. It just, you know, you're, if, if you're part of a wave, they say, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You, you know, and yes. that's yes. just what I got a chance to be a part of every day down yes. there. Is that Nikki Jean over there? You know it is. Okay. <laughs> and she asked about J.J. Hill because she went to J.J. Hill yeah. with me. Okay. Did y'all ever go out? What'd you say? Y'all never went out, did you? Uh, we, we. <laughs> what what just happened? That, that was my prom day That's right there. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to eat no nothing. Right. They go out now. I just thought that right. was a cute fact that I knew. That yeah, I we knew. had a prom at one point in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's just <laughs> I'm not going to ask what happened right. at, at the end of the prom. All right, right. okay, okay. No, I'm joking. Uh, go ahead. Nikki Jean's gonna actually going to hit the stage with us momentarily. Go ahead. How's it going? What's I'm Brandon, your name? Brandon Pofus. Nice yeah. to uh, make your acquaintance. What's up with all these potholes, my man? Like, we get, what are we going to do about the potholes? We all think of the same thing, right? We all think of the same thing. That's real. <laughs> what, 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 go ahead. What do you That's real. About? Hey, it's not even just potholes. So we, had, we have had more snow emergencies in the first four months of my administration than we have in the last two years combined. We've had a rising river. I don't know if you saw, we had a rock slide last month. We had a parking ramp collapse. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of challenges. Having that, having that snow like that packed like it, the way that it did, uh, it really had the same impact that it's always had on our streets, but it just had it in a more kind of pronounced packed way. Usually we get in over the course of the winter and are able to patch them in between. Uh, we're just playing catch up right now. So I'll tell you one thing, our street crews are working, they're, they're working day in, day out, every day of the week, all day of the, just 24 hours a day, they getting on them. Pop holes in y'all lives. Yeah, that's man. what it is. Who else got a question? Real quick, what's your name, sir? Hey, how y'all doing this morning? What's up, man? You I a finally, citizen, I finally, I'm trying to get to meet y'all. Okay. What's happening? I'm about it. All right. Uh, I'm Emo. It is finally a great time to meet you guys. Thank you. Thank you. You Yay. guys are the most powerful people in radio. Wow. Know that. Wow. Know that. Wow. Because the word is out for you guys. We listening to you every day, despite the great crowd we got. I just want to ask the mayor, what's going on with the modified slavery on the jobs? The temporary jobs that are going around with these kids, you know, they're giving them this 90-day call to work, uh, no missed days, you can't miss a day, 
You can't call in. Uh, you're on a probationary period for 90 days. If you don't complete that 90-day probationary period, you're out. You got to start back over. You know, and with that being said, you know, it's a, a big turnaround on these jobs, these temporary, these permanent jobs that they call in temporary jobs. Some of the academy, you know, uh, I did construction for 25 years here. OK, from downtown St. Paul to downtown Minneapolis. And now they came up with a new program for a pre apprentice. What is a pre apprentice? You an apprentice or you're a journeyman? in the a world of uh, a construction work, you know? And Minnesota is booming with construction work, okay? okay. We just built a brand new stadium. Uh, you know, the numbers were way down in minority employment on the right. job. Okay, so, okay. so give, we me a, got give, us the, give us the question. Field. Give the mayor the question. What you gonna do about it? Ask about jobs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do about hey, that's permanent, <laughs> permanent jobs that they call in temporary? Yep, so All right. So right now, so one, that's why we're raising the minimum wage, because we want to make sure the people who work full time are never stuck living in poverty. So we're raising the minimum wage. I'm committed to signing that into law before the end of this year. And that's really critical. Right now in the Twin Cities metro area, you know, we got 100,000 job openings right now. For every 10 job openings we have, we only have eight job seekers. I was in a conversation just recently with some downtown business owners, and we were talking about bringing businesses and bringing employers. They got worried because they're like, we're competing for job for employees as it is. Yeah. So our focus right now is on ensuring is on identifying the barriers that keep people from participating in our workforce and in our economy and getting rid of them. That means transit. That means education. That means uh, pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship programs to train people for the trades and th those types of programs. Uh, and that means ensuring that th that's one of the reasons why uh, criminal justice reform is yeah. so important. Because right now in Minnesota, we have one in five Minnesotans has something that could come up on a criminal background yeah. check. And when yeah. we say that, people think of like axe murderers and stuff like that. But we know eighty percent of the people we're talking about are nonviolent drug offenders, right. you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we just can't continue to field a competitive regional economy while disenfranchising 20% of our potential workforce from the workforce. So we're focused on making sure work pays, we're focused on eliminating the barriers, and we're focused on economic development because we're building a stadium right now in St. Paul, and we have actually two once-in-a-lifetime opportunities right now. We are redesigning uh, over two 100 acre neighborhoods right now from the from from the ground up. So we have a lot of opportunity. We got to prepare people now for it. Nice. All right. Okay. And they're fixing up the potholes. And we're fixing the potholes. <laughs> Any of these young dudes up here got a question? Go ahead. Get, get get this guy right here. What's your name, man? I'm Ken Vail Bu Buchanan. Okay. And I was just gonna ask, how many uh, loops did you have to come through to become the mayor? Hmm. How many loops? Yeah. All, all day, every day. <laughs> you know. Was it, was uh, it hard? It was definitely hard. You know, I'm teaching my children to ice skate right now, and I tell them, you know, the only thing you got to learn is every time you fall to get back up, you know. Mm. Uh, and it was definitely hard, you know, and there were a lot of moments where we look at each other and say, do we really want to do this? I have an amazing wife at home. I have incredible children. My family's been an incredible support. Uh, we surround ourselves with good people, so our team could not be better. There's not a better team in the world th than the team that we're working with. And, you know, just being focused on what our goal was, being focused on what our strategy was, and having great people around me who have continued to push us and say, we're absolutely doing this, this is worth it, has been helped us get through every moment. All right, two quick questions real quick. Heather yes, Bean and Tracy G. Okay. Really quickly, Mayor Carter, I, I, thank you, young man, for your question, because I yeah. wanted to direct this towards the youth. It, um, do you have a volunteer program? Because I feel like a lot of times young people do want to mm. get involved and they just don't know how. They hear the word politics and it's just like, I don't want to get involved in that. Is there a system or a program set up where young people can come volunteer to say maybe vote for you next term? Because I feel like part of the reason why you are extremely successful is because you lived here. You've been a part of the community. You understand and you speak the language. But we want to see a young man like this doing the work as well That's right. in five years and in 10 years. So do you have a program where young people can start being involved in the political system here? Yes, thank you for the question. <laughs> you know, I, like I said before, you know, I'm in love with municipal, the local politics 
politics yes. I'm just in love with because while Washington DC is in par 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 paralyzed and they just argue th over things all day long, you know, we don't have time for that at the local level. When people are in trouble or something's going wrong, we got to yeah. send an ambulance. We got to send a firefighter. You know, yeah. we got to apply we got to fill those potholes as we discussed earlier. And so, <laughs> I wouldn't have been mayor had it not been for the over 600 people who came out to volunteer for my campaign in the first place. But oh, we don't wow. want to stop it at politics because our goal is we need y'all involved in the work of city building. And so I tell folks every day that building a city that works for all of us is going to require all of us to do some of the work. So we've absolutely launched the volunteerism platform. It's at stpaul.gov slash serve where we're asking people to come and sign up, not just to volunteer and door knock with us on the campaign mode, but to come and just help us, you know, advocate for policies, help us kind of, you know, you know, read the kids at our libraries and help us do all the things we got to do to run a city. Say the website again. It's serve. It's it's stpaul.gov slash serve. All right, man. Let's give it up for the mayor. Ladies I appreciate you having me on. Elvin Carter, man. Nah, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Give him a round of applause. He didn't have to be. Tracy, go ahead real quick. Okay, Just Promise cool. me it's quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I promise it's real quick. This is actually a follow-up to um, the question on challenges. When we had Wintana up here, she was saying how, yeah. you know, Minneapolis has one of the most racially divided communities mm -hmm. here. And that had me um, interested in knowing we always hear that politics is dirty. So with you being the first black mayor, what did you have to deal with? Like, did you have to endure any type of just, like, filthy politics? Yeah, you know, we, we actually had a really tough moment uh, last summer. My house got broken into. Wow. And, you know, as a, uh, as a son of a police officer, my father, after he retired, actually uh, gave me uh, two firearms that he used as a police officer in this community for almost 30 years. And so, you know, one of the things that was a challenge, obviously, just having our house broken into is violating. It's challenging. Uh, and after that came out, uh, there was one of our political action committees uh, led by our police union, honestly, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of sent out some stuff trying to basically accuse me uh, for having guns stolen from my house of being responsible for all the shots fired in St. Paul last Whoa. summer. And so we had to deal with that. And, you know, the, luckily, the, the beautiful thing about this city is, you know, if there were 10 or 15 people involved with trying to come with that attack, there were probably 100 or 1,000 people who just showed up at our campaign office who just brought donuts out of the blue, who came to volunteer or who came to give money or decided they were going to vote to say, we don't accept that type of politics in our city yeah. and they're going to support the movement that we were building. All right, cool. You know, uh I want to hear from uh, other folks too. Not, not you know. I want to hear from some white folks in the community too about what are your what's your perspective? How is the experience here in turn? We talk about racial divide, yes. but not everybody has the same experience. Can somebody speak up? Put their head, just put the mic in somebody's face, OQ. Oh, and let's see. Can can you speak to that at all? Like what little is your Kim, what you is your vote yet, what's your Kim? what's your name, man? Uh, my name my name's Drake, but uh, I don't want to break your heart. I don't even live here. Okay, who lives here? <laughs> Go to, to your left, oh, to your left. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Sway? What up, brother? Hey, How you doing? My man, my man. Yeah, hey. what's up? What up, brother? Got, glad I could make it. My name's Daytime. Uh, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm. I grew up around everybody. I went to middle school with everybody, and as soon as I moved here, it was like a whitewash. Uh -huh. Like, I didn't see a soul that wasn't, like, just pasty, and it, like, freaked me out, <laughs> because growing up in that environment, I mean, it's, it's healthier for everybody. Yes. Uh -huh. It's really unhealthy to have neighborhoods over here, neighborhoods over here. That's right. And then try to clash it with, with no, with the, no, there's no. Understanding. There's no, no understanding. There's no, no guidelines. 50, no, yeah. yeah. We're, we're just kept separate. And mm. there's, I don't think anyone's trying to do anything about it. At least yeah. that's, I've been here for 10 years and I haven't noticed one difference. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, 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 and what you, what, what's your ethnicity? I'm Polish. Okay. Good. <laughs> All right. Cool. And that's why we yeah. come here to kind of, you know, mesh it all, because you see yes. a lot of folks of different ethnic backgrounds here, and I want everybody to have an opportunity to, to have a voice up in here. That's what, that's what our, that's really what we do here, man. We just a conduit to really bring people together through understanding. We utilize entertainment, mm -hmm. we utilize music and all these big name artists or whatever that come on the show, but that's just the carrot to get to this point. Well, you mm -hmm. got a mayor out here who, who just yeah. came. He could have been doing anything today, but he wanted Facts. to speak to the people and touch the people. He's beyond a politician. This is a human being that cares about his community. Keep that in mind mm -hmm. when you go to vote and you go to these midterm elections and all these local elections, that this is a man that's in the soil with you right now that you could actually touch his hand, 
He doesn't have the most expensive suit on, but he looks great. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. I'm just joking. I'm joking with you. Soy Calloway. Hey, this is nice, man. No, no, no. You got a nice suit. I'm joking with you. But the point is. Sway hating on you. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love him. The Warriors lost last night. Right. He fell in some tackle. Is that what it is? Yeah. He's so hurt. Is that what it is? Don't talk to people out here about losing playoff games. They fall hard, though. Right. Please. 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 But but that's that's what this is all about. And I agree with you that the segregation yeah. has to stop. Yes. All that is I just agree. political uh, well, bullshit to keep people right. divided. It, yeah. That means right. nothing. Like yeah. even it gets to a point where it should be to, to a point where the cut complexion of your skin shouldn't mean anything. Mm. It's just a, um, it's really the results of your actions and how you perform as a human being. We so wait, can I jump the, in and say one thing on that, you, man? Please, sir. So, you know, you're absolutely right. Too often, we end up kind of stuck in our little corners or in our neighborhoods. Uh, we're doing something in St. Paul right now that we call Bridges to Borders uh, uh, and mm -hmm. just saying, or, I'm sorry, Borders to Bridges, uh, where we're saying, you know, we want to connect people across neighborhoods. And the reason we're having this conversation is because, you know, there's a lot of us who oppose Trump's border wall. Trump wants to build a wall between the United States and Mexico, but you can't just say that if you are allowing all of the walls that exist in your neighborhood and in your city and in your school, wherever you're at, to just go on unchallenged. And so our goal is to just challenge people everywhere we can to just cross those walls, cross those borders that exist between neighborhoods, that exist between races and languages yeah. and ethnicities, between low income folks and higher income folks. We got to start getting engaged with each other. We got to start getting to know each other. Yeah. That's the way we get out of all this mess. And it'll be just like this. Look at everybody around you. That's everybody right. look at everybody That's around right. you. Look to yeah. your left. Please look to your left, it's look to your right. Us. It's beautiful. everybody talk to up in here, Talk man. To this is beautiful. If you stand next to somebody you don't know, shake their hand. Look at them real right. quick. Look, oh, love. Yes. Shake yes. their hand, man. Exchange that love, Seven. that respect. Okay, oh, look behind you. Tell a man who doesn't on, live man. here. Shake your hand. There you so, go. Shake your look hand. Look at little Cam. So okay, we got an question. eight year old. We got an eight year old that wants to ask a question. Oh, give little Cam, give little Cam the mic. Little Cam is feeding. And then this will be the last question. And Nikki Jean is gonna come up here. My question is, like, do you work with the National Guard? And like, like, do you like hire army people? Like, help hire army people? Like, pick out the best, like people for the army. Oh, that's military. Oh, that's military. That, yeah. that's a great. How old are you? Eight. Eight, man. That's a great question, man. And and I'm gonna tell you this. I'm only going to be mayor until you're ready to be mayor, okay? So when you're ready to take over, you let me know, and we need you kind of stepping into this space, all right? Okay. All right. So the question was about military. So <laughs> the city, we actually run the police department, so we don't necessarily run the military. That's a different thing that the federal government runs. You asked about the National Guard. That's at the state. But at the city, we have our police officers, and one of the things that's really important to us is to make sure exactly what you just said, that when we hire police officers, we hire people who know our neighborhoods, who we can like really trust in our communities, who treat us with respect, and who have a stake in our neighborhoods, and kind of not just kind of soldiers who are in our neighborhoods patrolling, but people who are helping us create positive outcomes in our neighborhoods. My dad was one of those people for about 30 years, so I've seen what it's supposed to look like, mm. and we are working really closely with our chief to make sure that every single police officer we hire is the type of person who's just like that in our neighborhoods. Thank you for that question, Cam, all right? Give it up for Cam, young eight-year-old, care about the community. Yeah. Wow, that was good. That was a great question. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I right. Saw that, right? <laughs> Mayor Melvin Carter, can you give out your info, uh, social media so people can hit you directly? Yeah, absolutely. It's just uh, uh, at Mayor Carter 3. Uh, at Mayor Carter, the number three is on Twitter. Uh, hit me up there. We're on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, follow us, get involved, kind of get engaged with us. Yes. Uh, and, you know, help us build a city that works for all of us. And I really believe that as we do that in St. Paul, as we do that in Minneapolis, as we do that in neighborhoods and cities across the country, that's how we do that for America. That's how we set us up ourselves like right. This, man, man, when you run for national office, you got my vote, brother. All right? Yeah. I appreciate okay, that. my man. Yeah. Mayor Melvin That's Carter, real, thank Sway. you for coming by, Woo! brother. All right, up next, we're going to talk with Mickey Jean and Sway in the morning, Shay 4-5. We got a cypher come. How many hyenas yeah! up in here? Yeah! All right, okay, Sway in the morning, Shay 4-5, wonders. Yeah!